On the issue of mining in the ocean, there is no small picture, small issue. It's far bigger than what the government or Papua New Guinea wants to um, go down. That's in fact, it's a massive move, right? So over the years, we've actually dealt with what they call land exploration on mining and so on. We took a lot. The resources in the country just talks about LNG itself. It's about 80% of resources. In the next 50 years, resources on the land is massive for Papua New Guinea. A question about why do you want to exploit the mining into the ocean? It's always an issue that every developing country, every country for Papua New Guinea is no, no exception. Currently, in the way we have reviewed, and when I mean the university, and I think you're taking us wrongly, we are not academics. Most of us are kids who've grown in Papua New Guinea, who worked outside. We've got wide experience know about this issue. We have done the technology. And so we're coming back to university. These are Papua New Guineans who know the substance. So when you go into the ocean, it's a new ball game. We don't have the capacity. So why do you develop one? If you look at the laws of the land, the land doesn't apply into the ocean. These are issues that our legislation, first you must make sure the policies and legislation of any country is in place. If you don't have the capacity for us as Papua New Guineans, then you miss big time. You will make sure, you will make sure our kids suffer. That's what you're calling for. Listen, you're talking about a sovereign state, Papua New Guinea. If it doesn't have its laws, if it doesn't have its policies to go into the ocean, don't start one. That's a risky business. Going into the ocean, because a developer like, and I will mention the group, Nautilus, and others who are paying for tournaments into the ocean, this is a new ball game. The international law calls for it for all states, right? Coastal states and islands must develop in this area. Currently, Papua New Guinea doesn't develop one. You know, it's embarrassment. We have, we have signed the treaty and the agreement, but we haven't moved. So first, like I said, let's get our house in order before you go into the ocean. Don't think about just because of money. The, not the least environment impact statement is flawed. Now let me tell you this. Number of us, even our colleagues overseas who are Papua New Guinea have reviewed it. We have reviewed it. You talk about experts, you're looking at one of them. This is an area we spent our 50 years in the ocean, in, on the mine, looking at technology, looking at the data, looking at modeling. So we have reviewed this and we say it's flawed. You want to take a flawed thing? And the guys who reviewed it, these are Australian colleagues on the other side. We know them. You call them international experts? I'm sorry to say this, but this is something that you, first you develop your capacity, secondly you develop laws this, you take your time. This uh, area it's uncertain. We've never been there, the world has never been there. They've never been there, no way. The developer, not all this, they call for the technology, they don't have such a technology, they're borrowing. These are new, it doesn't work anyway. Saying our science, our understanding of ocean is very poor. The work tells us that we have fish that live down there. Tuna gets a little closer to that. Yeah? 600, we've run equipment there. So we know what we're talking about. Do you protect your country first? We don't have one, so unfortunately, we should hold that back. And so our own all, whole concept of this is it's full of uncertainty. The precautionary principles are applied. We have laws that they call it the Mining Act 91, 92, the MRA Authority 2005. Those are flawed and they're only meant for land, right? The section uh, 11, 12, 15 on Act, Mining Act 91, 92, it's flawed in terms of waste, right? It doesn't talk about the ocean. This is, this, uh, this is our own legislation we haven't gone through. We haven't had our own offshore mining policy. That's what I, that's what I mean by first, get your house in order. You do the science for it, you develop the data, and the data we talk about it, you must take at least more than 10 years. Study the place, study the technology, and only when you're confident, then you apply. For the time being, we're saying, <clears throat> and for most of us who know the substance and so on, we're saying, hold on. If I were you, if you're basing it on the first impact statement, because there's no mitigation options involved with it. You know, they tell you that they're gonna ship the thing over to Rabaul, and then 
in turn they will bring it back into the ocean. What if the whole container drops in the ocean? There's no mitigation option. We have competent incompetency within the mining sector that we don't have our smart people inside. We have DEC too. Those are sectors that must do dil good diligence and review those work better. And for the time being, we made a rush. Our suggestion is probably put what they call a temporary uh, stop, use it what's called the preconditionary principle, use a number of international laws that tells you that you can hold it. Like the law of the sea tells you apply precautionary principle. That because you don't have it, you hold on until they develop it. What's one, let me ask you, what's one billion in terms of phase one? Right? And our term is, if you, if you have a comprehensive hazard and risk management disaster, you save, you save Papua New Guinea. At the moment, it's not. So it's, 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 it's unfortunate. This, this particular issue that I'm talking about, risk assessment or disaster management, is not included in the what they call EM, the Environment, Impact, uh, Environment Act. It must be included. They haven't put it in. That's why I was. That's why we, you know, advocating that the company is not honest with with the people, basically those who live in this last sea, or the government. You need to know what after processing. What do you do with it? Do you throw them in the backyard of Rabaul? The law on mining act doesn't actually say it. It's, it's, it doesn't exist. All right, for the ocean. The the international. Maritime Organization law on the two pollution act that we, we were supposed to have endorsed it or ratified in, in here under the shipping. It's not done. So whose fault is it?